Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we are looking at tab binding as a binding method for your handmade books and junk journals. This is a great no-sew binding option that not only allows your books to lay completely flat, which is great, but you also have the option of binding single pages and folded pages, which is great for greeting cards, for example. You can also bind whole signatures in this way, random things like these CD cases, which I suppose you can say fall into the single pages category. And the same can be said for envelopes. This is a very fun and versatile and easy type of binding that can be applied to many different projects. So let's dive into the tutorial. For this binding method, you will need strips of something. So it can be fabric, washi tape, paper or cardstock some sort of double-sided tape, ribbon or cloth tape. You can make your own DIY version of cloth tape, which is what I've done here, by backing your fabric with just standard double-sided tape. In fact, you can do a combination of different things for your tab binding. You can mix and match. For example, in this one here, you can see a combination of two different things. We're only talking about the tabs at the moment. And I've got fabric and I've got this gold tape, which looks so extravagant, but actually it's just a bag. You can see some type of a bag here that I cut up and I'm starting to hack into. And of course, look at this gorgeousness here. All I did is back this with, of course, the double sided tape and made these tabs on this journal look so much more amazing. So you can most definitely mix and match, use a bit of this, use a bit of that. You can pop some ribbon on top of the paper, for example, use that for your tabs. So really get creative. But these are some of the examples of what you can use for the actual tabs. All right, now let's get on to the procedure of binding your journal. The actual process of doing the tab binding is exactly the same regardless of what you are binding. So as I said before, you can bind single pages like this. You can bind cards, you can bind folded pages like this. You can bind whole signatures. But the process is exactly the same regardless of what it is that you're binding, regardless of how thick it is. There, however, is one little thing to keep in mind if you are binding thicker things or thinner things, and we will discuss that. But for this video, I am going to demonstrate the tab binding process using envelopes. So this really can be treated as a single page, or you can simply imagine it's a whole signature. And basically what I'm stressing with this is that it doesn't matter what you're binding. The process is exactly the same. Okay. I also want to add a cover to my envelope. So basically what I want to have is like a journal looking thing that I can fill up with ephemera and fun stuff. I think it's probably better to do to go with even, even number of things that you're binding. Just to make this process quick, I'm going to bind four envelopes together and two covers, and that gives me a total of six things that I'm binding together. I'm going to pop everything in the order that I want it to go in, and we're starting off with the very first page, or cover. And of course now I want to decide what kind of material I'm going to use for binding. And who am I kidding really? I know I'm going to be going back to this because it's so scrumptious. This is going to be my binding material. I'm going to prepare my strips by applying double-sided tape to the back. But you know, in all honesty, I probably could get away with using this with no double-sided tape and just applying glue. You don't need double-sided tape. Basically, all you would do is apply glue to the edge here and apply the tab. So when you're binding thicker things like 
things that need more space to move, like signatures, probably a good idea not to use double-sided tape because when you open your journal and you're flipping through the pages and you come to this space in between signatures, you can see this space. You can see this here, the binding in here, okay? If you use double-sided tape, that in there would be sticky. That would be the sticky side. And that's something that I personally wouldn't want in a journal. So when binding signatures, I don't use anything that's sticky on this side. So no double-sided tape business. If you're binding single pages or cards, you can see how tightly they are bound together because it's thin, okay? And you can barely see the other side of that double-sided tape in there. That's not sticky because everything is close together. So with today's project, I'm not binding signatures. I'm going to go with the double-sided tape because I know that everything's going to be quite close together. When we start the active process, which will be in the next moment or two, I promise, it will all make sense. But for now, I'm going to prepare my strips. Double-sided tape applied, and now I'm just going to cut my strips. And just quickly mention that, no, I'm not going to gloss over the fact that double-sided tape is not permanent. And as a matter of fact, washi tape is also not permanent. So if you were to bind your book with the double-sided tape or the washi tape, it wouldn't last very long, or things might start to peel off. So what I like to do is just add a dab of glue, but for today's video, I'm going to, you know, make things quick. I'm not going to be adding glue, but usually I would just add a dab of glue onto each edge and that's it done. Okay, now how long do you want your strips? That's totally up to you. This is what I'm talking about. You can see here at the back how long the strips are here. You can see on the inside of the journal how long the strips are. This is just the way that I wanted my things to look. You can have your strips really long coming to half a page, which would be using up half a page, really. Or you can have them short. Like, for example, what I've done here. Oh, upside down. Here, you can see they're quite short. And I even did a little notch here to make them look a bit more, you know, not straight edged. So, totally up to you. But however long your strip is, these are about that long, these strips here, I don't know, probably an inch and a half. And you can see how much of the tab is showing. So for this project, for my envelopes, I might do two inch strips. Just so you know, you don't need to measure anything. And in fact, I suggest and implore you not to measure anything. Like just rip up your fabric or whatever you're using. And what am I trying to say? Just, just do it. You don't have to sit there and have two inch strips. Another thing, in case you want to know, if you want to know how many strips you will need in advance, you will need for each page, first page, you need three strips, then two, and so on. Three, two, three, two, three, two, until you get to the last page in which you don't need any strips. And here we go. I'm starting my binding process finally. Here's my first page, and we're starting with three strips. And I'm just going to pr approximately lay them like I want it. You know, one in the middle and two on the side, of course, like this. If you're using a wider material, let's say you're using something that's really wide, you have to make sure that you can fit five of whatever you're using, five of them, on the page, right? Because the next one that we do, we're going to be applying two strips and they have to fit exactly in between these strips, okay? So when you're using thin strips, you don't have to worry too much about that stuff, all right? So this is going to be my approximate placement. I just want to make sure that I kind of like where it's at. I want to, you know, center it somewhat. And that's looking good. All right. Remove the double-sided backing. All right. And there's my first one. Glue down. It's really going to glue down to my desk now. But that's all right. If you're working with fabric, all you would do at this point is add a little bit of glue just onto that one side and glue it down. And here we go, very easy and simple, first page is done. And now I'm going to turn this over. And now here comes my next page. And now what I do, I don't glue it on there directly, I get the next two strips. The light has completely changed, as you can see. It's very gloomy day today, so uh, the lighting is going to keep changing throughout the video. All right, so we're doing two strips on the next. So we've done three, two. Just keep in mind that we are alternating. Keep repeating to yourself, alternating, alternating. So we've done three. Now on the next page, we're doing two and they have to fit in between these guys. Alternating, alternating. All right, here we go. We've got three, now we've got two. Now this 
goes on top of this. Move it all the way to the edge. And now this might get a little bit confusing as you're working through your project because you'll be like, okay, what did I just do? At this stage, we have just applied two. That was the last thing we've done. We are alternating, so we're gluing out down three. All right, so pop this back where it has to go and glue down the three. You see that? I probably could have come a little bit closer in so that there's no sticky stuff, but that's all right, we'll just keep going. Okay, so that's done. Next page, here we go. What are we, what are we doing now? Are we doing three or are we doing two? The previous one we've done was two, so now we're doing three. Try and apply them in the same line as these guys here. The binding will look much neater that way. Here we go. Done. We've applied the three now. This goes on top of our booklet like this. Okay, which ones are we putting down now? We've just applied three. We've just done that. So now we know that we're gluing the previous ones from the previous envelope, which is just the two. How easy is this? You can see when it comes to measuring and choosing the length of your strips, you can see what's happened here. On this side, I have this longer piece and on this side is this shorter piece. That's kind of like what tab binding looks like. So you can decide if you want to be precise with this, if you want to have the exact same amount, if you want to cover it, you know, what are you going to do on there? Maybe you might want to cover it like this and then you have this beautiful kind of a look. Anyway, these are all things that you can think about as you go. All right, what are we doing now? We've done the three, so now we're doing just the two. Trying to get it in the same line as these guys here. Lovely. Pop this on top. We've just done two, so it's the three that's going down. And now for this one, we've just done the two, so now we're going to do three. And here we go. One, two, three. Now this goes on top of our little stack here. Make sure it goes all the way to the edge. And we've just done three. So we're putting the previous ones down, which is the two. And now I've bound in four envelopes and now I want to add my cover. So as you can see, you don't need to keep going with the strips anymore. All you're gonna do is put this down on the stack. Make sure it's lined up with the front cover. Excellent. And pop these down. So in this case, because I am binding a little thin booklet that you can see this quite a narrow little thin booklet, right? When I'm gluing these downs, I'm making them tight because basically I want to avoid, as I said, the stickiness in here. Even though you can go in and add a little bit of talcum powder or, you know, I know talcum powder now is, you know, cornstarch flour, let's say. Anything powdery, if you just add a little bit on there, it loses its stickiness. But when I'm binding something narrow like this, I make them really, really tight. You can see here, see how tight that is? Look at that. And this one as well. But as I said before, if I'm binding in whole signatures, I want a bit of movement. And especially because you can see I have lace here and uh, this is gonna be written in and there's gonna be stuff that's glued on. And so, when I'm wrapping them, I'm not like really pulling tight because, you know, I want to give it a little bit of space. That's all beautifully secure in there. It's not going anywhere, but it's not tightly bound so that it's like stuck all together here at the spine and then gaping on this side. I hope I'm making sense. And you are probably wondering now how are you binding in whole signatures? I'm not sure that I explained that really well. So when binding signatures, you follow the exact same procedure we've done here. We'll come back to this to finish it off in a moment. You have your front cover. You have your signature number one, signature number two. I have four signatures, you can see, and I have two covers. But the signatures, here's the trick. I know it says no sewing, but the pages in the signatures are sewn together. That's a really important point that I probably should have said straight away. So going back to my signature that I showed you previously, if you're binding a folded page, your tabs are going to be attached to the front and to the back of the page. So nothing's going to be falling out. However, if you're binding a signature, which is a number of pages folded in half and nestled together, 
when you're doing the tab binding, the tabs are going to be catching on the first page and the, the last page of the signature. But then all these pages inside are just going to fall out. So you need to secure your signature first, okay? And the way that you do that is basically by doing a three-hole pamphlet stitch, which is what I've done here. Or you can staple, use your, especially if you have a long arm stapler, you can staple your signatures or your pages together, or you can sew right through that signature and then you can bind it in exactly the same way as I've just shown you and you treat this signature as one page. Another important thing that I wanted to mention that I think is pretty important is that you don't have to do the way that I did three on the first page, then two on the next. You can do whatever you want. You can do four tabs on the first page and then three tabs on the next page. For example, as long as the tabs fit in between each other, so you can see these are too wide, I would need to have a larger, you know, you would need to have a larger space. So the, the thinner your strips and the larger your paper, the more of these tabs you can have. So you can make it really fun. Or you can do two tabs on the first page, two tabs on the next page, etc., etc. Let me just drive this point home. So first of all, your pages don't even have to be all exactly the same height, exactly the same size. You can do two on the first page, and then on the second page, you can do also two. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that your strips fit in between the previous strips. Just that's the only thing. Then you pop this on top, and you're putting the first two, gluing the first two down. You get your next page. Let's say your next page is not a single page, it's a folded page. You can do that too. You can have a combination of folded pages and single pages and envelopes and a signature. Pop this down, pop this on top. Now, when you do that, of course, you're not going to be gluing it to itself. So it's the previous two that you've done. The one that's glued down, the previous one, is the one that you're lining up with. Last page, you don't need anything. Pop your tabs down. All right, and look at that. You have a little flippy booklet. That one's the folded page, so beautiful for, you know, if you wanted to make an art journal, for example, that lays flat, that has these full pages. Oh, just love, 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 love this. I'm personally not loving how it's, this is looking on the inside, probably because of the contrast of the black and the gold tape. The tape is really standing out. Uh, now this one here, this is the CD cases. You can also see the tape on the inside, but because we've built up the pockets and I kind of kept the tape exactly the same size, it looks a little bit better. And what I think would look a whole lot better, if I did this whole project and I did this, I cut into the tape, I think it would look so much better. But in any case, what I wanted to do now, and of course that's exactly the same that I've done here, you can see that my tabs are hidden on the front. They're not hidden on the back. So at this stage, you can go ahead and hide these first tabs here and at the front. And in fact, that's now what I'm going to do because I want to make a complete project here. I will do this. I will speed it up and then I will come back and I will talk about the details such as all the things you want to know, like you can see here, Anyway, we'll come back to this and I'll show you all of the details of all the little extra things that you can do with this type of thing. I always tend to be asked, where do you find, you know, where do you get that beautiful paper? Or Generally speaking, all of the things, because there probably will be someone out there asking me about this gorgeous piece of beautiful paper. So most of my stuff, if not all, I will find at resource rescue shops, craft fairs, Facebook marketplace, and I always, always, always say this. So I don't actually have a link that I can give you for this. In fact, I got this at a, like a craft fair and it was all kind of discounted stuff. And this, I don't even know what this is supposed to be. You're supposed to, it's like a little gift box. You see that? And then you pop a ribbon through. So it's already got these holes, but of course that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm going to use it for. So I'm going to do something with this piece and this piece to create to finish my project. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you about these. 
and now I'm thinking what I want to do is create this into some sort of a like a pocket or something like that and it's got the holes as I said before right there so I want to utilize them in some way I could perhaps do something like this that can be opened up have some writing space in there or something like that but I'm more inclined to use this as a pocket I feel like perhaps having a gold bow sit right here on top and going through those holes would be a nice look and I love the gold and, and black combination usually love it but especially lately for some reason all right so what i've done so far is i've glued this piece down directly onto my cover i've got a little bow happening here and i've sewn the edges shut so that's now a little pocket that i'm going to pop something into but before i glue that down i'm going to add these little cardstock gold corners to the edges and that's looking really really good and now i'm simply going to glue this down and that's looking really good and now of course I have a pocket here i'm going to create something real quick to go in there and here's what i did i just created a little tag like a writing you know a little tag that's now going to live in this pocket and that kind of finishes it off and it looks quite nice indeed so now the next thing i want to do i want to finish this whole thing off and as i said before i don't like the look of these tabs obviously that's one thing to keep in mind the tabs will be visible and all of the projects I've done so far, I've left the tabs visible, but in this project, I'm really not liking it. So I'll come up with something and I'll be right back. Okay, and now let me show you what I've done. So first of all, I covered the front and back panel because it was too white and I just covered it with some scrapbook paper. And then I did pockets on this side and I left these tabs visible. I just wanted to kind of hurry it along. I don't know if it made it better or if it made it worse, but in any case, that's what I did. I want to keep on moving so this is a finished little booklet where it can be like an ephemera kind of a thing right fill it up with little goodies and it's good to go okay now that this is done i want to show you my other projects to give you lots more ideas so let's start with this if you'll notice this is scrapbook paper it's card stockish scrapbook paper that i folded in half cut down you fold it in half and bound in this way i think this is a perfect project for greeting cards especially if you want to use greeting cards that you've been given over the years you want to have them in a little booklet you don't want to kind of snestle them in and then you have the front of the card somewhere there at the back you want the card to open and you see the message and everything so this is the perfect binding for that and you do it in exactly the same way as i've shown you before so what i've done here if you'll notice the binding i've done the exact same way as i've shown you before and then at the end i added these two this it doesn't actually do anything it's not functional it wasn't part of the binding it's there simply for decoration because i wanted to add this front piece and then i thought you know what's gonna make it look even better and basically all i did i took an extra piece of something in this case it was this same paper and i just added a pretend tab over the top glued it down and that's how i created that look before i did that of course i added this pocket and a little you know just playing around adding these pieces because i just love the look of this gold and black paper and added the tabs and then you can see a little bling pieces it kind of looks like uh, a purse uh, purse hardware or something like that you know it just looks really beautiful really elegant all right so that's that one really really simple great for greeting cards next let me show you this one i didn't personally make this one this was sent to me as happy mail by one of my lovely subscribers and this is where i got the idea to do to learn how to do the tab binding right so all this is i'm gonna do a quick flip through in the hopes that you will be inspired by all of this goodness so there's a whole lot of stuff happening there's little pockets and little tags that can be pulled out you know there's a lot here to explore there's a lot of tim holtz in here that i can see little paper clips and you look at that flip ups and and all sorts of stuff but you can see before all of the stuff was added 
it was just a single page. It's just a single cardstock piece of paper. You see that? And then all of the little bits and pieces were added to it. So you can see Tim Holtz, lots of, I think a whole lot of this stuff is Tim Holtz. Pockets and what have we got here? Flip out. So this to me is a piece of art, really. This isn't something you're going and writing. Maybe you would, I'm not sure. But to me, this is something that that's a, a, one of those things, you know, that's inspiring to look through and to pull out all of these bits and pieces and look at all of these amazing things. So a little piece of art in itself. Look at all these little things that can be pulled out and greeting card. I mean, what am I saying? Altered playing cards, pockets and flip outs and, and all this gorgeous ephemera and vintage little pieces. How beautiful is this? And the thing that I love most about it is the fact that you can see as I'm flipping through, you can see how chunky it is. It's full of stuff, full of stuff, right? Yet it lays completely flat. Even with all the stuff inside, it lays completely flat. And when I saw this, I thought, I have to make this. I have to make something like this. So here I am today. How cool is that? And when you pop it down, it doesn't spring open. Anyway, I just love the tab binding. Next thing on the agenda are these old CD cases. Plenty of these floating about. There's all different kinds. These are the ones that I happen to have. And so treating them as single pages, of course. Here's my little booklet. And it's, again, like another ephemera type of a little booklet. All of the pockets are filled. Instead of CDs, there's all these beautiful papers. Here's another one of those pouch things that I have in gold as well. This stuff. I have some in this. You know, you come up, uh, across these beautiful things at random places, be it marketplace or whatnot, and then you hoard the beautiful things because you don't know where you can get them. Another thing I wanted to say is when I applied my double-sided tape to, you know, the bag, and I think I did already mention this, but you'll find double-sided tape is not per permanent and over time it might sort of come undone in which case you apply a little bit of glue. So this, these actually did come undone the next day, pretty much. I was expecting that because it is kind of, you know, once I filled it up with stuff, but very easily fixed. I just applied a little bit of glue and stuck it back down and that's it. It is now there to stay completely flat when it opens and it's really quite fun. Really quite fun indeed if you have this type of CD cases. I mean, these are all very grunged up and coffee dyed as you can see, but I can do exactly the same thing with these. You can do anything, you can use index cards. Some of you might remember this video that I did on index cards and just jazzing them up. I did make a booklet as well, but I didn't use tab binding and I feel like these single projects, look at this, how how beautiful this for, is this for a cover. For these single pages, I think, choose the best one, of course, and you can bind them together using the tab binding method, that would be pretty cool. Another thing you can do is make yourself an art journal. If you already are into mixed media and you have a lot of these kind of painting papers, you see all of this, I mean, some of them are horrendous. Some of them are great. Look at this one. This one took a whole lot of time to paint. And then you can fold them this way, fold them going up this way, you know, fold them this way and that and then make yourself an art journal using the tab binding because of course, with this binding method, you have a flat surface to work on, especially pages like this, that are not single pages, that are folded pages. Look at this canvas surface, it's flat, and you can go ahead and draw. I'm not into mixed media and art journaling, but how beautiful is this? for backgrounds and especially if it's your own backgrounds that you've made with your jelly plate, for example. And finally, if you're making a whole journal, you know, the whole signatures thing. Okay, so here's what I wanted to say about this and I already did speak about it, but this was bound using fabric. I had the same kind of size pieces, approximately similar size, I suppose. And the way that I did this, I would say, let's grab a page here. Apply a little bit of glue here and then pop it down, right? Do the same thing with my all of my other tabs. Turn it around 
And because I was binding signatures, the next page that comes along, let's say this, you line it up. And because it's a signature, it's thicker. Instead of like really pulling it tight, I left a little bit of space, just a little bit of space. So that way, when your signatures open, in between the signatures, you have that little bit of space rather than completely together. See that? You can really see those tabs underneath, okay? Now, with the combination of fabric and this beautiful gold tape, the gold tape was an afterthought. I first bound this whole journal just with this. When it was bound, I thought, oh, I would really like to, you know, as I was creating the cover, I was loving the gold. I really felt like having a little bit of gold on the cover would make it look so much better. So then what I did, I had my little gold pieces, take the backing off, and then because I have space, I could slide things in and glue on top of the fabric. I could do that because I had this space to work with. So you can really say the gold tabs here are just for, you know, just for looks. They're not actually holding anything together. They're just glued on top of the fabric. Quite obvious here. And I actually didn't do it on all of the tabs. Some tabs I did, some I didn't. For the cover, if you just want to see a little bit of detail, I did two of those pieces that I've shown you before and used the holes that were already there to pop this ribbon through. I'm really into the whole gold thing. Luckily, I had a gold doily that I've been hoarding for, I can't even tell you how many years, who knows how many years. Then I had this little piece. This is metal from a broken necklace. Glued that right down, made this into a pocket. It's just a piece of vellum, nothing special, but it looks so good on this journal. And I have a little thing, little charm hanging there. Gorgeous. And then, of course, before I did any of this and any of the binding and tab binding, I sewn lace onto, you know, onto the pages. I wanted the lace to be picking out, which is why I did that. It's got nothing to do with the actual tab binding tutorial, but it's just a little extra thing that I did to make this. I, I'm in love with this, absolutely in love with this journal. And as is the case with many projects, there are always pros and cons. And I believe I've spoken about all the pros and the cons, the only cons being really is that it, it is a little bit time intensive, you know, cutting down the strips, gluing down the strip, get the next page, glue down the strips, you know, but that can be said really for anything that's worthwhile doing. And another con of, of course that I've mentioned is the fact that the tabs are always visible unless you know, you go in and you cover them with something and that's up to you to use your own creativity on how you can make this binding even more special and better looking, I suppose. So personally, this type of binding is something that I will definitely come back to. And I also absolutely love the black and gold combination as well. So that makes everything so much more special, doesn't it? All right, I hope you feel inspired. I hope you've learned something new, or if you've already done this type of binding before, which I'm sure you have. I don't know why it's taken me so long, but here I am. I hope that even if you have done this type of binding, you have learned something new. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!